The following is a production of New Mexico State University. Starting with a typical Denver urban property, Arun Das has created a landscape that is anything but typical. Arun, what were the opportunities and the challenges this property offered you? Well, Curtis, this was a all grass lawn, bluegrass lawn garden when I first purchased the property. And over the years, I decided that lawn didn't do a lot for me. And in addition, it used a lot of water. So I wanted to convert it into more of a low water garden. Is this all done at once? No. In fact, I uh, take a sort of evolutionary approach to my gardening. And I start off with one bed at a time. And each year, kind of add an additional bed to my garden. So you grow the garden. That's right. It evolves over time. What are the plants? I see some really striking plants here. Well, we've got a number of uh, flowering plants at this time, including uh, ice plants. We've got the uh, nubiginium yellow ice plant there. Another one even down there. And that's, uh, that you're right, that's another variety of ice plant called starburst. And here I see a pink color that's not very common in gardens. This is an unusual almost salmon color, which is a South African plant called Coral Canyon Twin Spur. It, it adds something to a landscape that I don't think anything else can add. But right next to it is a plant that looks striking just in its form, the big it, ball of starburst. You're, you're right. That's a, a Persian allium, Persian starburst allium, which is one of the largest uh, ornamental onions you can have. The way you've done the uh, blue avena here is growing between the rocks like a grass would grow in nature. And in fact, I like to use ornamental grasses wherever I can as highlights. And this one just happened to fit in perfectly between those rocks. And I look back in here, what, what's usually an unused property looks like a very restful area. It is. I've put a bench in here. Well, why don't I show you it down this okay. way? This is a really shady area, but I noticed as we came in, you had grasses and grass-like plants that needed more light. And now we transition into those that need very little light. That's true, Curtis. This is an all-shade area. I've got three summit ashes that keep this shaded all through the warm months. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I plant those plants that can take dry shade. Now, this is an area that most people don't landscape. There's not a whole lot of space between me and my neighbor's house here, but there was just enough for me to develop this small garden. And my neighbor was kind enough to allow me to place uh, plants, those euonymus Manhattan plants there, against mm -hmm. his uh, uh, north-facing wall because he doesn't utilize that space at all. So it's worked out very nicely. That's, it's good to have neighbors you can work with like that. Oh, it's very good. And of course, the ferns and hostas like the shade. They do. They're doing well. Of course, there's certain ferns that like our dry climate, and a lot of others just can't take it that dry. And the coral bells even flower in the bleeding hearts. Flower in the shade. They do. They get a little bit of morning light here, but most of the day is shade, and they're still getting nice colors. So now we're moving out into the light, and I hear some water over there. We're coming around the bend towards our pond. This is a really interesting pond. Does it use a lot of water? Actually, Curtis, uh, despite what you might think, the pond uses less water than if I had kept this as bluegrass lawn. Really? We actually add water to this only once every two weeks for about 15 minutes. Hmm. And this is the east side of the house? That's right. So it's nice. We get the morning sun. We come out here and eat uh, breakfast a lot of times, and we can mm -hmm. watch the pond and birds and butterflies, and, and it's uh, very relaxing. And then in the evening, it's shaded. So you can come here in the evening and listen to the babbling brook and be relaxed. That's the other side of it, is in the uh, evening here in Denver in the summer, it gets really hot on the western side, but on the eastern side, it's shaded. And I notice you've got a river birch here, which is appropriate for this kind of setting. Yes, another tree you wouldn't think that would grow in a low water landscape, but it actually has fared very well here with uh, just a minimal amount of water. The preceding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.